Hey everyone, welcome to another Clean Machine Live. My name is Jeff Palmer. I'm the CEO and founder of Clean Machine, plant-based fitness nutrition. It is plant-based, but it's for everyone and anyone who wants to live a healthy, happy, fit lifestyle. All right, before we get started, let's do the disclaimer. This video is for informational educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. All right, so let's talk about maintaining muscle. All right, muscle is really important uh, for not only overall health, uh, cardiovascular health, uh, cardiopulmonary health, if you're using endurance exercise or aerobic exercise. Exercise is important for keeping healthy weight. It's important for your brain function and increases endorphins in the brain. Um, exercise is so important um, that it affects, science has shown it affects cancer rates and cancer risk and cancer deaths. It affects heart attack. It greatly impacts type 2 diabetes. So the health benefits for exercise are across the board. Um, whether you're exercising for good sexual health, good mental health, um, good physical health, it all impacts it greatly. And the more you do, generally, the better it is without going extreme. So we all know that the health benefits of exercise are great, but what about those times when you find yourself, you can't exercise? Like when you get an injury in the gym, you're lifting and something just doesn't feel right. You need to take a little time off and let it heal because you don't want to make it worse. What about when you're traveling, either for work or for business or, or even for pleasure? Sometimes you're not able to get to a gym. Sometimes you just don't really want to get to a gym because you're taking some time off and taking a rest. And look, there's nothing wrong with taking a break. But I think what a lot of people don't really want is uh, to have that time away from the gym become a problem for them so that they're actually losing muscle mass. So you know, we have holidays, we have family emergencies, we have workplace that takes place, we could be moving, could have a, a loss in, in the family. All of these things could be important enough to take a break from exercise. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. But this is a really interesting study because it shows you could be able to protect those gains that you work really hard without having to take weeks to try to get back the gains that you just spent so much time trying to accomplish. Um, and remember, that muscle can be important for strength. If you're elderly, it prevents uh, falls, uh, which hip fractures from falls from frailty is one of the leading causes of disability in uh, for the elderly. So there's so many reasons to stay fit, stay healthy, stay strong. And lose and maintaining that muscle mass. Remember, just a pound and a half of muscle will burn. Uh, just, I'm sorry, two pounds of muscle will burn a pound of fat every single month. So that's a lot of calorie burn just by having that muscle on you. So you know, if I hear people say, "Oh, I want to eat less to uh, to actually." Um, lose weight. Well, there's some truth to that. You do have to do that to some degree. But if you don't eat enough or consume enough protein, you could actually lose the muscle that helps burn those calories more so and could help you not only lose, but maintain a healthy weight, a healthy amount of body fat. So here's the, here's the deal. This was a really interesting study. I'm going to talk to you about the layout of this study. Let's go ahead and put this study up on the screen for those of you who um, want to take a look at the study. Well, put it up right in the screen below. Uh, let's see, right there we go. The study is called the Early Lean Mass Sparing Effect of High Protein Diet with Excess Leucine, which is one of the branch chains, during long-term bed rest in women. So what they were looking at is, okay, so when you can't exercise, when you're bedridden, like if you catch the flu or you get sick over the uh, the holidays or something like that, um, and you and you can't get to the gym or shouldn't be going to the gym and spreading the cold or flu to anybody else, there's downtime. So they looked at women and how much lean mass they maintained while their body was at rest for a lengthy period of time. 
So uh, obviously you can tell by the name of the study, the lean mass sparing effect of high protein diet with leucine. So leucine is one of the three branch chain amino acids. I'll go ahead and hide this down so you can see me talk a little bit more. So there's three branch chain amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. These three branch chains are named because they're branched chain structure. So a lot of other the proteins are in single strain, not branched chain. So it's talking about them. But those three branch chains have a very different effect. It's specifically leucine, which is what was called out in the study. Leucine is the most anabolic amino acid out of all of the nine essential amino acids. Why is that? Well, um, when you look at a cell, there are basically docking stations. There's a docking station for insulin, a hormone that when it docks to it, tells the body it's safe to pull in sugars and fats to use for energy. So use carbs and fats for energy, but there is a weight and need a way to open up that lock, that key that goes in the outside, and that is leucine. Leucine does that, acts just like like uh, insulin, it docks to the outside of the cell and allows the cell to open up and pull in amino acids to make uh, proteins. Now, what it does, does do that is because leucine can be a trigger to stimulate muscle growth. Okay, so you need two things though. You need the key, leucine, to open up the door, and then you need the essential amino acids, the building blocks, to make those proteins. Now, leucine goes into the cell and activates a mechanism called mTOR. mTOR helps the body say, let's turn on the machinery to start making proteins. Making proteins when you're working out is necessary to help you recover, to help build muscle, to help strengthen muscle, help strengthen the cell by making it thicker, more full of protein, or enlarging the cell and making it bigger. And that's what bodybuilders do, is they do that. Now, at 60 years of age, generally people my age are uh, affected by what's called sarcopenia or age-related muscle loss. I think that's a bunch of hooey. There is a little bit of degree that you can't fight that will happen over years. But look, I turned 60 this week and I still have the same 180 pound, same you know 10% body fat, that I've had for the last 10, 15 years. Nothing's changed. It's because I exercise regularly. I'm telling my body to keep this, and then I'm feeding it with both protein and branched chain amino acids, stimulating that muscle to stay there, to stay growth. We know through studies of sarcopenia that branched chain amino acids, specifically leucine, can stimulate the body to maintain muscle tissue even at rest. So let's dive into this study. What did they do? I'm going to go ahead and put the parameters of the study. I don't know if it'll fit up here in the comments section, but I'm going to give it a shot. And uh, I'll post it in the comments section for those of you who are watching, but I'll post it right up here on the screen too, as well for you watching on YouTube at a later time. Uh, all of these uh, studies and all of the things of videos that I talk about live on our YouTube channel at uh, Clean Machine Online at YouTube. Um, so this study it, um, had 16, it was a small study, so let's take it for what it's worth. Uh, small studies with small amounts of people shouldn't be taken as a solid fact, but it's useful information. Useful to say, hey, wait a minute, let's explore this in more studies to see if it really proves out in a larger audience. But it's a great small study to take a look at what they found because if the effects are significant, then it's worth taking it to the next level. Having some of my uh, branch chains as we speak right now. Okay, so what are the parameters of the study? So the conventional group had 1.1 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight. Um, for those of you who are interested, 1.1 grams of protein for someone like me who's 180 pounds um, uh, equals to about 90 grams of protein um, for the day. All right, so 90 grams of protein for the day, you stretch that out over three meals, it's basically just 30 grams of protein per meal. Very easy to eat, peanut butter and jelly sandwich with some nuts, you're already there. Uh, scrambled tofu um, in the morning, uh, there you go, you have your 30 grams of protein and a, a stir fry with some beans and stuff in it and easily 30 grams of protein. So 90 grams of protein is very simple to uh, actually accomplish. And the high protein, 1.6 uh, 
uh, grams of protein per kilogram. Now, there's a lot of research out there um, talking about how much protein is uh, the maximum amount that people can use to stimulate muscle growth or make muscle gains. And most of the research is settling on right around 1.6 to 1.8 grams of protein per kilogram is about maxing out the uh, amount of protein that the body will utilize to stimulate and maintain muscle. Um, so any more than that, you're probably wasting and just adding calories without any uh, muscle building or muscle sparing effect. Um, and so this is, this is why they use this 1.6 uh, grams of protein. So uh, for, again, for someone like me who's 180 pounds, um, that's 130 grams or 40 grams more protein, basically a little bit more than another protein meal. If you're doing about 30, 30 plus grams of protein per meal, um, you're adding about another, uh, 30, uh, grams, 40 grams of protein for the entire day. For me, that equates to a fourth meal. So I have breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and usually a shake or a bar or something in between that. That's the fourth meal I've got. Now at, at four meals a day, that equals to about 32 and a half grams of protein per meal. Again, this is pretty easy to eat, to eat that in a, even on a plant-based diet, uh, 32 grams of protein. You take two slices of Dave's bread, that's 10 grams of protein. You put on some almond butter or peanut butter, there's a, there's 20 grams of protein. So you're already at 30 grams of protein. Just in the peanut butter, you throw in some, some nuts uh, as a little complement to that um, or our drink or something like that. And you're easily at 30 grams of protein just on a peanut butter and banana sandwich with cinnamon. One of my favorite sandwiches, but so easy to get this on a plant-based diet. It's not that hard and you don't need to, you know, create a excess waste. Now bars and shakes do make it easier because look, I'd like to keep my calorie count down a little bit. So uh, on a plant-based diet, if you're eating higher amounts of protein for fitness and health, you are looking at higher amounts of protein, like uh, 120 to 130 grams of protein for someone in my body build. That's how I can maintain, you know, 17 inch arms at 60 years of age is because I'm consuming enough protein to sustain that. Well, I notice when I do drop down, my strength goes down and my size and weight go down. My muscle is uh, decreased. Why? Because the body uses a lot of energy just to maintain muscle. Now, what I don't want to do is say tofu. Tofu is a great source of protein, right? Uh, the soybeans, real high in all the essential amino acids, high in leucine, stuff like that too. But it also has a high amount of fat to it. That adds a lot of calories. So if I did tofu at every meal, uh, something I wouldn't recommend, then you're getting a lot of fat during the day too. And that's not something I, I prefer to have for myself either. So by using a protein shake like clean green protein, high in greens, but low in calories, only 160 calories to get uh, 20 to 30 grams of protein in there, that's few calories, lots of protein. And that's how I can equal that out with my food. So I combine a little bit of the uh, protein, isolated protein sources with my whole food plant-based diet. And uh, that's how you can accomplish this on a, a whole food plant-based diet if that's what you're doing. And if you're not adding those plant uh, proteins in there, in their whole food state can give you all that nutrition, all the vitamins and minerals you're looking for, the essential fatty acids, et cetera. Okay, back to the study. So they added... Um, they looked at the conventional group having about uh, about five grams of, pro of leucine per day. That's throughout their meal for the entire day. And um, and then about uh, in the in the uh, high protein group, they added 11 and point four grams of leucine per day. Um, so that's about six and a half more grams of protein or it's the equivalent of basically adding a scoop, scoop and a half of clean branch chains to your protein um, in a day. So just a very simple addition. You can mix that up in a shake, drink it down and do it. What they found during the first 15 days, I'm gonna go ahead and put this up on there because these results were pretty impressive. Um, sometimes the results don't show a whole lot. These did. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that up on the screen right there because 
and I'll read this to you too. During the first 15 days, so over two weeks of bed rest, that's BR is bed rest, the mean nitrogen balance, that's how much protein, protein, eh, okay, so nitrogen. All right, so everything that we consume has basically three common molecules to it, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, or CHO, C-H-O. Um, so all CHO, all carbohydrates, all fiber, all protein have those three molecules in them. As a matter of fact, when you exercise, you break them down and release them. And carbon dioxide, CO2, is part of that carbon and oxygen. And then hydrogen and oxygen is H2O. So you breathe out when you're exercising, right? You breathe out. That's exhaling what you've just broken down, the carbon and hydrogen or carbon and oxygen, CO2. That's one carbon, two oxygen molecules. So you're breathing it out. You break apart that protein, you break apart the carbohydrates, you break apart the fiber, you break apart the um, uh, fats, they're all C, H, and O. And you break apart those three molecules, releasing a lot of energy, and that's what gives us energy. And that's where we can get energy from carbs, fat, protein, or fiber, because they're all C, H, O, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen based. You release that as carbon dioxide, you breathe it out in which you exhale, and you release it as H2O, as sweat through water or urination. So when you work out really intensely in the gym, there's two things you'll notice. You're breathing hard, so you're breathing out more carbon dioxide, but taking in more oxygen because oxygen acts as a catalyst to burn those things, to uh, add a spark to the fire. If you ever taken a match and then put it in a place where there's no oxygen, it goes out quickly, right? It's because it has no oxygen to feed the burning process. That's why we breathe hard when we're exercising because we're feeding oxygen to the fire that's releasing that carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen back into their molecular states. And we breathe out the CO2. We sweat out and pee out the water or the H2O. But Plant uh, uh, proteins have nitrogen bound to them. So they've got the three carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, but they have a fourth molecule, nitrogen, attached to it. And that's what makes protein different than carbs, fat, or fiber, which are all carbohydrates, CHO, carbohydrate, H2O. So that's where that word comes from. It's a carbon, carbohydrate, H2O, water. So that's what a carbohydrate means. It's that molecular structure. Okay, so when you break them all apart, you're released with the nitrogen, and that nitrogen retention is what makes up muscle, what makes up all of the proteins in our body. Proteins have that nitrogen in there. So when they're talking about this statement right on the screen here, nitrogen balance, that's how much protein that you are maintaining in the form of muscle and other proteinaceous tissues. Okay, so what they found during the first over two weeks, 15 days, that the mean nitrogen balance or the protein retention, the muscle retention was two and a half times greater in subjects on the high protein with branch chains than those on a conventional diet. You know, if people ask me, it's like, oh, why do you take protein and, and BCAs when you're not working out? to maintain that muscle, to maintain the games that you worked hard for in the gym so you don't go through this period of what's called muscle turnover, or protein turnover, where you expand the need for the protein so the body accretes or acquires or gains muscle. And then when you're sedentary or have periods where you can't get to the gym, the body says, oh, you're not using it, so let's break it down and get rid of it. So that's what you don't want to do. You don't want to keep building and then breaking down and then building back up and then breaking down again and then building back. You're, you're on a treadmill, treadmill at this point. What you want to do is build, maintain, build a little more, maintain, build a little more, maintain. Now you're building on building. And that's how I can stay at this kind of muscle at 60 years of age because I'm building and maintaining by keeping my protein and keeping my branch chains levels high enough to keep and maintain this. This study was amazing. 15 days in bed rest, which means they were immobile. They weren't mo using their muscles at all. Two and a half times more greater 
muscle retention simply by continuing to feed the body on your downtime high amounts of protein and branch chains amino acid. Now I say high, I mean appropriate, appropriate to maintain them. If you want to maintain your gains, then this amount of a protein is appropriate. Now, some people will say, well, Jeff, but isn't too much protein not good for you? Too much animal protein is not good for you. And check out my other uh, videos, especially the one comparing animal proteins to plant proteins that show that animal proteins in one study show to a 500 increase in diabetes and a 400% increase in cancer, yet the same exact amount of plant protein did not cause those effects at all. So there's a big difference in the way plant protein works in your body compared to the way animal protein. So yes, high protein, it can be dangerous for you if it's animal origin. I explain why the methionine content, TMO generation in your, in your digestive tract, heme iron, there's a whole list of different reasons why animal proteins are so different and behave so differently than plant proteins in the human body. So high amounts of plant proteins do not appear, at least in research, to cause the negative effects that animal proteins are because of the structural difference of the proteins themselves. Plant proteins have non-heme iron. Animal proteins have heme iron. Animal proteins are high in methionine. Plant proteins are low in methionine. There's just a whole host of different reasons how those proteins digest, what byproducts they produce from the microbiome, all the way across the board. So if you want to maintain your muscle during downtimes, this small study, and take it for granted, it's on women, so it may not be as prevalent or it may actually be more uh, than that in women. We still need more research to find out. But this is a great study because when something is 250% more muscle retention than the other study group, this is a very significant study, a study to take seriously. We definitely need more studies like this, larger scale, larger groups, mix of ages, a mix of men and women to really drill down to how these effects happen. But it's pretty clear by this study, even though it's a small study and only on women, that just consuming the right amounts of protein and branch chain amino acids can help you maintain that muscle and not lose it and not go through this bouncing yo-yo effect. Like, oh, I had, I had to take a week off from working out because I was traveling for work. Okay, well, then you lost a lot of the gains. Then it's going to take you two weeks to get back. So you're you're gaining muscle, you're losing muscle. Gaining muscle, you're losing muscle. Gaining muscle, you're not gaining anywhere, you know? It's when you gain muscle, maintain the muscle even when you're down. Then you can gain a little more and then maintain the muscle when you're down. And then main, gain a little more. That's how you can stay big and strong and healthy and affect all of the rest of those things. Better sleep, better sexual health, better physical health, uh, lower risk for cancers, lower risk for diabetes, lower risk for heart attacks. These are the things that can keep you alive and keep you healthy and promoted, but you need to consume the right amount of plant proteins and branch chain amino acids, which can help you maintain the gains. I hope this is really useful for you. And this is why it's important. You should be using your, uh, if you choose to use proteins and branch chain amino acids to be in the best physical shape and strength and health you can be then use them even when you're not working out to help you maintain that. The science is there. You can read it for yourself. I always put the science and the links on the screen so that you can follow them and read for yourself. And I hope you can apply some of these techniques to make and improve your life so that you can maintain the gains. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with uh, some more great studies. There's a lot of cool studies coming out about health, fitness, plant-based nutrition, and exercise that uh, I think are really going to be useful for you to help you be in the best shape you can. I hope these are um, useful for you uh, going forward. We got a question from Raymond. Raymond, good to see you again. Uh, are you familiar with blood flow restriction? Weight training allows uh, the use of smaller weights, especially for, but yeah, some athletes actually are using uh, blood flow restriction. Um, so 
blood flow restrictions using uh, pressure uh, bandages or, or sleeves like on your arms or legs or extremities. Obviously, you can't use it on your head or uh, on your torso is not so great. But when you put pressure on a muscle, it restricts the blood flow and it has to work harder to try to get that uh, nutrients and stuff there. So it kind of forces the body to work out even harder. Now, to this happens to some degree naturally when you get a great pump. So when you pump the muscle really tight, it squeezes that. And squeezing the muscle will squeeze out more what's called arachidonic acid, so an omega-6. Arachidonic acid is a cell signaler that's, that uh, gets stored in muscle tissue because when you squeeze that muscle really hard and they fill it up with blood, then you're going to get a really strong pump. And that pump does a compression on the muscle itself. So I prefer rather than artificially putting a sleeve or something on the outside of the body is actually use my type of workouts. Here's one trick for you to help you get a pump. I do uh, periodization, which is using different workouts, different, different weeks. So say when I'm using a, uh, uh, a heavier weights um, uh, and, and, and do a set of six or eight reps. So I'm doing, you know, like, 50 to 100 pound uh, dumbbells, six to eight reps for various different exercises. And uh, I feel a little bit pumped, but right after that set, I'll pick up a 25 pound or 30 pound uh, pair of dumbbells and they just pump out reps really uh, pretty quickly, not too fast, stay controlled, but pump out really quick. And this forces a lot of blood into the muscle tissue. It gorges the body with blood because when you're working out a lot of reps, you got to get even more blood there to get more oxygen because your body is doing more reps. And that will really force a lot. So I do that at the end of every uh, set of exercises. Like I do three sets of six or eight on heavy weights. And then I'll do a set of 20 to 40 reps right at the end of that set to pump all the blood and stuff the blood all in there and jam it up in there so that the body swells and gets really tight and creates that compression in the muscle. So you can achieve that effect without having to put on, you know, uncomfortable sleeves on your legs and arms and chest and stuff like that. So really easy way to do it without using compression um, or restriction of blood flow. You want to get that blood flow to the muscle, but you want to make it nice and tight there so getting a good pump on, obviously I created a product called uh, N10s pre-workout. Actually, I got a little bit here right before my workout. N10s has an amazing ingredient in it called S7, which uh, actually is a vasodilator. It helps actually expand the uh, blood vessels so more blood gets to the muscles. Now, when you get more blood in the muscles, it's gonna cause like filling up a balloon with water you are gonna pump more blood into that muscle so it constricts it, makes it tighter. It's like stuffing stuff into a suitcase and it's really hard to close. That's basically what your muscle gonna be. It's gonna be really hard to like press it all the way down because it's so engorged with blood. That will help you achieve some of the positive effects that you see with uh, blood flow restriction or compression uh, techniques. So. There you go. Good question. Thanks for joining me as always. And um, if you like this, give it a thumbs up, give it a share, and be sure to check out all the other videos on, uh, on YouTube at Clean Machine Online. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next week.